Good afternoon. I'm going to give a presentation on the ergodic capacity in millimeter wave ad hoc networks with imperfect beam alignment. My name is Andrew Thornburg, and my advisor is Dr. Robert Heath. Uh, this presentation was given at the 2015 MOCOM conference in Tampa. So why are people interested in millimeter wave networks? Uh, here is a, an FCC allocation chart for uh, what is currently considered UHF frequencies and millimeter wave frequencies. And what we show here is that the entire uh, UHF deployed spectrum can fit into a very small portion of the millimeter wave spectrum. And as the frequency increases, the amount of spectrum available increases as the, it is the log scale. So there's a huge amount of spectrum uh, possibly available in millimeter wave bands. Uh, there's been calls to increase the use of, uh, of this spectrum for military applications, e.g. Uh, 38 gigahertz. And recent advances in antenna technology and semiconductor ma manufacturing make millimeter wave possible for mobile ad hoc networks. So what are the differentiating features of millimeter wave communication? First, it's the use of directional antennas at the receiver and at the transmitter. Because of the shrinking wavelength at millimeter wave, uh, the, the ability to include multiple antennas in an antenna array becomes very feasible for a portable device. And as a result of this antenna array, you get uh, directional communication. And secondly, is that blockage can reduce both the signal strength and ideally the interference strength. So as you can see here in the cartoon, uh, the receiver pair here is isolated from this interference that is pointing directly at it. Um, common building materials uh, in an urban environment, such as concrete, brick, tinted windows, can exhibit up to 40 to 80 dB of penetration loss. So the key question, one of the key questions that we answer in this paper is what is the ergodic capacity of a millimeter wave ad hoc network? Secondly, is that we're wondering is that any beam forming algorithm is going to introduce beam alignment errors into this user pair. So another key question that we have is what impact does this alignment error have on millimeter wave ad hoc networks. In previous work that we've done, we have assumed that these user pairs have been perfectly aligned and uh, we want to see what type of performance loss uh, happens whenever you introduce these errors. There's a lot of previous work uh, with stochastic geometry and ad hoc networks, uh, hundreds of references. There is um, less work on antenna misalignment uh, there's some work in low frequencies, CDMA networks, and as, it, uh, as an application of how does it affect outage probability. However, none of these incorporate the peculiarities of millimeter wave communication that we talked about previously. Um, and there has been some work on uh, cellular and some work on backhaul ad hoc networks. So now we will go over the system model. So here is our general ne network model. We have a random network with an infinite number of user pairs. The buildings are located randomly, according to a Poisson point process. We have distance dependent path loss, small scale fading, and, and small scale fading. Um, I'm going to go and talk about these uh, particular, what these values are um, in a few slides. And as I said earlier, a key component of millimeter wave communication is the uh, antenna and the directional antenna. And so we use two antenna models in this work. First, we use a sector antenna, which has a constant gain in the main lobe, and then a constant side lobe gain, which is shown here in orange. And then we have the Gaussian antenna, which uh, kind of has a more natural roll-off, uh, which is what you would see in a uniform uh, planar array or a uniform linear array. And the reason for including this difference is that uh, this roll-off becomes important when you consider the uh, antenna misalignment. So to kind of give a more detailed explanation of the, the random network, I'm going to go piece by piece, <laughs> that we have a, uh, transmitters that form a Poisson point process on the 2D plane. Each transmitter has a receiver at a distance r located away from it and randomly uh, distributed circuit uh, from 0 to 2 pi. Each pair beam forms to each other, ideally perfectly. 
We have random buildings uh, with an orientation, length, and width determined independently placed on the 2D plane. Uh, without loss of generality, due to Slivniak's theorem, we can analyze the typical user that is conditionally located at the origin. So now we will talk about the ergodic network capacity and define what that is. So we define the ergodic network capacity as the expectation of the sum of all of the rates in the network. And this expectation is with respect to blockage, distance, beam forming gain, and fading. So many different random variables. So with stochastic geometry, we can simplify this down to the PPP user intensity. It's sufficient to analyze just the typical user located at the origin, so the SINR of the typical user, and then just evaluate the expectation of that rate. And we want to note that this is not Shannon capacity uh, because there's no, no uh, equivalent notion of capacity for a mobile ad hoc network. So here is the main uh, quantity that we manipulate in this work. It's the SINR of the typical receiver. So the quantities that we have here are the path loss intercept, which at uh, 28 dB is roughly uh, 60 dB, or 28 gigahertz is roughly 60 dB. Uh, going up into the higher millimeter wave frequencies and increases to 70 or 80. Uh, we have random gain, so the gain at the receiver, gain at the transmitter, uh, reduced down to three possible considerations uh, for the sector antenna. So we have that the interference is pointed at the typical receiver, the interference is pointed at the uh, side lobe of the typical receiver, and then ideally the interference and the typical receiver are pointing it away from each other. We have a uh, random distance, DI, due to the Poisson point process. And we have uh, each interference is either going to be line of sight or non-line of sight with a path loss exponent of four or two. Now for the signal, uh, we assume a fixed uh, receiver distance, R. We assume a gamma random variable fading, which is also uh, for each uh, interfering term. We assume for now, uh, that there is perfect gain at the signal, and we also include the noise power. So in order to evaluate this, we use this useful lemma uh, that for two independent uh, positive random variables, the log of, the expectation of the log of it, which conveniently looks very similar to the SINR, we can separate it out into the signal, the noise power, and the interference and it evaluates to this analytical expression, which here we have the expectation of the signal, which can be reduced down to the moment generating function of a gamma random variable. And then secondly, this is the Laplace, the Laplace uh, functional of the Poisson point process of the interference. And what, uh, what stochastic geometry gives us is a closed form expression on the ergodic capacity. I use closed form in, in quotes because it's, it can be uh, a little bit messy. So um, kind of the, the, the key idea in order to uh, separate out all of this interference uh, from millimeter wave networks is that by the thinning theorem, thinning theorem of Poisson point processes, the interference can be decomposed into six independent Poisson point processes. Essentially, we have users that are line of sight and users that are non-line of sight. And within each of those, we have the three different gain values that are possible. So what that gives us is that we can reduce the uh, Laplace transform into the multiplication of six of those Laplace transforms. And what this gives us is that we have removed two sources of random niche, which, which greatly simplifies the expressions. Um, and the final expectation is with respect only to the spatial distribution of points, which can be analy analytically evaluated with, um, with stochastic geometry. So here are um, some results. Uh, this is for the, the network ergodic capacity, which will be in bits per second per hertz per meter squared. Um, so what this shows is that uh, net gains overall, as more users are added, which is uh, what you would expect. And what is important though is that there's no per user guarantee. So as you are adding users, uh, you're adding 
aggregate rate, but the rate of each of those, peop uh, each of those users is going down. And we see that there's about a 20% gain by limiting uh, the communication to strictly line of sight. Now we want to show the per user uh, ergodic capacity over the same uh, user density. And what we see here is that going from uh, user density of 10 to the minus 6, which is one user per kilometer squared, to about 10 users per kilometer squared, it's roughly uh, noise limited. So as we add more users, the uh, per user ergodic capacity remains relatively constant. However, once you get past that threshold, uh, the interference clearly begins to degrade the per user performance. And so for the second part of the paper, we looked at how does misalignment affect the performance. Uh, in order to do this, we made two assumptions. First is that the alignment error on the interfering node pairs does not change the distribution seen by the typical user. Um, and we ran some simulations to verify this fact. And uh, secondly, is that we model the propagation as a single uh, ray, which means that there's no angular spread in the propagation. So what we mean by that is that if there is a single propagation path uh, model between these two users, ideally the beamforming gain achieves the maximum gain, which is g squared, which would align perfectly along that ray path. However, what the error induces is a suboptimal fraction of the perfect gain, which we denote as kg squared. So essentially, the, the ray is coming in at a little bit of the side lobe of each of those antenna arrays. And what we, uh, quant how we quantify this is with uh, the delta of the, 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 the difference in the capacity, which is the SINR this, these expressions are the SINR without the signal antenna gain. And we use a high uh, SINR approximation to eliminate the one and condense the equation and remove the SINR uh, without the antenna gain, as that will remain un, in, uh, unaffected. Uh, so basically what it reduces down to is the ratio of perfect gain to error affected gain. And we model the error as a truncated normal distribution uh, with uh, spread sigma squared. And we can analy analytically uh, evaluate this and get uh, expressions. So um, after some manipulation, we see that the capacity loss uh, with Gaussian antenna scales inversely with the square of the bandwidth. So you have the error, uh, the error power divided by the square of the 3 dB bandwidth. So here we have a loss um, for each user in their capacity. Um, so what we see here is that the high SINR side lobe approximation yields tight results. Uh, for this model, we use a 60 degree Gaussian antenna. And over a wide number of variances, we see that the uh, simulation and the analytical expressions that we derived uh, are very close matches. And at 20 degree error power, we see about a one bit per second per hertz per user loss in capacity. So um, with relatively small error rel relative to the beam width, uh, kind of a high per user error loss. And here is um, a plot with a fixed noise power, the same antenna with that 20 degree error. And what we see here is that, um, as expected, the loss uh, is invariant to user density. So we get about a one bit per second per hertz um, over all uh, user densities. And this is to illustrate the difference uh, when considering the two different antenna models. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the, because of the sector antenna gives that nice uniform constant gain over its main lobe, uh, it can introduce some uh, differences with respect to the Gaussian antenna. And what we see here particularly is uh, a two, uh, two x difference at 10 degree uh, error power. So either one bit per second per hertz versus two bits per second per hertz. So in conclusion, we derived an expression of capacity derived from millimeter wave ad hoc networks, uh, a gain of 20% if limited to uh, line of sight communication. There's a clear trade-off between network and user throughput. 
and the noise limited regimes and interference limited regimes are uh, evident. With respect to antenna beam alignment, the capacity loss increases rapidly with narrow beams. Even with large bandwidth, per user loss can be 10% of the capacity. Um, and the antenna models uh, drastically alter the magnitude of the results. So here are some references that we had uh, earlier, and thank you. Oh.